Leonardo Wilhelm DiCaprio, born November 11, 1974, is an American actor and film producer. Known for his work in biopics and period films, DiCaprio is the recipient of numerous accolades, including an Academy Award, a British Academy Film Award, and three Golden Globe Awards. As of 2019, his films have grossed over $7.2 billion worldwide, and he has been placed eight times in annual rankings of the world's highest paid actors. Born in Los Angeles, DiCaprio began his career in the late 1980s by appearing in television commercials. In the early 1990s, he had recurring roles in various television shows, such as the sitcom Parenthood, and had his first major film part as author Tobias Wolf in This Boy's Life. At age 19, he received critical acclaim and his first Academy Award and Golden Globe Award nominations for his performance as a developmentally disabled boy in What's Eating Gilbert Grape. He achieved international stardom with the star-crossed romances Romeo plus Juliet, and Titanic. After the latter became the highest-grossing film at the time, he reduced his workload for a few years. In an attempt to shed his image of a romantic hero, DiCaprio sought roles in other genres, including crime drama in Catch Me If You Can and Gangs of New York, the latter marked the first of his many successful collaborations with director Martin Scorsese. DiCaprio portrayed Howard Hughes in The Aviator and received acclaim for his performances in the political thriller Blood Diamond, the crime drama The Departed, and the romantic drama Revolutionary Road. In the following decade, DiCaprio starred in several high-profile director's projects, including the science fiction thriller Inception, the western Django Unchained, the biopic The Wolf of Wall Street, the survival drama The Revenant, for which he won an Academy Award and a BAFTA Award for Best Actor in a Leading Role, and the comedy drama Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, all of which were critical and commercial successes. DiCaprio is the founder of Appian Way Productions, a production company that has produced some of his films and the documentary series Greensburg, and the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation, a non-profit organization devoted to promoting environmental awareness. He regularly supports charitable causes, and has produced several documentaries on the environment. In 2005, he was named a commander of the Ordre des Arts et des Lettres for his contributions to the arts, and in 2016, he appeared in Time magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World. Chapter 1, Early Life and Acting Background Leonardo Wilhelm DiCaprio was born on November 11, 1974, in Los Angeles, California. He is the only child of Ermelin, a legal secretary, and George DiCaprio, an underground comics writer, publisher, and distributor of comic books, they met while attending college and moved to Los Angeles after graduating. His father is of Italian and German descent, DiCaprio is conversant in Italian and German. His maternal grandfather, Wilhelm in Denbergen, was German, and his maternal grandmother, Helene in Denbergen, was a Russian-born German citizen. In an interview in Russia, DiCaprio referred to himself as half-Russian and said that two of his late grandparents were Russian. DiCaprio was raised Catholic. DiCaprio was named Leonardo because his mother, then pregnant with him, first felt him kick while she was looking at a Leonardo da Vinci painting in the Uffizi Museum in Florence, Italy. His parents separated when he was one year old, they initially agreed to live next door to each other to not deprive DiCaprio of his father's presence in his life as he mostly lived with his mother. For a while though, DiCaprio lived with his father, stepmother and older stepbrother, Adam Farrar, with whom he was close growing up. DiCaprio and his mother later moved around to multiple Los Angeles neighborhoods, such as Echo Park and Los Feliz, while she worked several jobs. He went to the Los Angeles Center for Enriched Studies for four years and later Seeds Elementary School, before moving on to the John Marshall High School. DiCaprio has said he hated public school and often asked his mother to take him to auditions instead to improve their financial situation. He dropped out of high school following his third year, eventually earning his general equivalency diploma. DiCaprio has said his career choice as a child was to become a marine biologist, 
or an actor but eventually favoured the latter, as he was fond of impersonating characters and imitating people. When he was two, he went on stage at a performance festival and danced spontaneously, the cheerful response from the crowd started his interest in performing. His stepbrother earned $50,000 for a television commercial, which fascinated DiCaprio and helped him decide to become an actor. In 1979, DiCaprio, at age five, was removed from the set of the children's television series Romper Room for being disruptive. He began appearing in several commercials at age 14 for Matchbox Cars by Mattel, which he considered his first role, and later for Kraft Foods, Bobble Yum, and Apple Jacks. In 1989, he played the role of Glenn in two episodes of the television show The New Lassie. At the beginning of his career, DiCaprio had difficulty finding an agent. When he did find one, he suggested DiCaprio change his name to Lenny Williams to appeal to American audiences, which he declined to do. DiCaprio remained jobless for a year and a half, even after 100 auditions. Disillusioned at this, he initially decided to quit acting, but his father encouraged him to further explore his creative side, introducing him to underground art and art in general. Motivated by his father and the need to financially support his mother, he began acting regularly on television by the early 1990s, starting with a role in the pilot of The Outsiders and one episode of the soap opera Santa Barbara, in which he played the young Mason Capwell. DiCaprio got a break that year when he was cast in Parenthood, a series based on a successful comedy film of the same name. Before being cast in the role of Gary Buckman, a troubled teenager, he analyzed Joaquin Phoenix's performance in the original film. His work that year earned him two nominations at the 12th Youth in Film Awards, Best Young Actor in a Daytime Series for Santa Barbara, and Best Young Actor Starring in a New Television Series for Parenthood. DiCaprio was also a celebrity contestant on the children's game show Fun House, on which he performed several stunts, including catching the fish inside a small pool using only his teeth. Chapter 2, Career? Chapter 2 Section 1, 1991-1996, Early Work and Breakthrough In 1991, DiCaprio played an uncredited role in one episode of Roseanne. He made his film debut later that year as the stepson of an evil landlord in the low-budget horror direct-to-video film Critters 3, a role he described as your average, no-depth, standard kid with blonde hair. DiCaprio prefers not to remember Critters 3, which he describes as possibly one of the worst films of all time, exemplifying it as the kind of role he wanted to ignore. Later that year, he became a recurring cast member of the sitcom Growing Pains, playing Luke Brower, a homeless boy who is taken in by the Siva family. Co-star Joanna Kearns recalls DiCaprio being especially intelligent and disarming for his age but also mischievous and jocular on set, and making fun of his co-stars. DiCaprio was cast by the producers to appeal to the teenage female audiences, but when the show's ratings did not improve, DiCaprio quit toward the end, attributing it to bad writing. He was nominated for a Young Artist Award for Best Young Actor co-starring in a television series. In 1992, DiCaprio played a supporting role in the first installment of the Poison Ivy film series, and was handpicked by Robert De Niro out of 400 young actors to star in This Boy's Life. The film is a biopic on the relationship between the rebellious teenager Tobias Toby Wolf and his mother and abusive stepfather. Its director Michael Catton Jones has said that DiCaprio did not know how to behave on set, after he applied a strict mentoring style. DiCaprio's behavior began to improve. Bill Jabiri of Rolling Stone found that the powerful bond between Barkin and DiCaprio elevated the film, praising his character's complex growth from a rebellious teenager to an independent young man. In 1993, DiCaprio co starred as the intellectually disabled brother of Johnny Depp's character in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, a comic tragic odyssey of a dysfunctional Iowa family. According to director Lassa Hallstrom, he was initially looking for a less good-looking actor, but cast DiCaprio after he contacted Catton Jones and found DiCaprio to be the most observant actor among all who auditioned. 
the film became a critical success. At 19, DiCaprio earned a National Board of Review Award, as well as nominations for a Golden Globe Award and an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, making him the seventh youngest Oscar nominee in the category. The film's real show-stopping turn comes from Mr. DiCaprio, wrote the New York Times critic Janet Maslin, who makes Arnie's many tics so startling and vivid that at first he is difficult to watch. The performance has a sharp, desperate intensity from beginning to end. Karen James, also writing for the New York Times, said of his performances in This Boy's Life and What's Eating Gilbert Grape, he made the raw, emotional neediness of those boys completely natural and powerful. DiCaprio's first effort of 1995 was in Sam Raimi's western film The Quick and the Dead, but Sony Pictures was dubious over DiCaprio's casting, and as a result, co-star Sharon Stone paid his salary herself. The film was released to a dismal box office performance and mixed reviews from critics. DiCaprio's next film in 1995 was The Basketball Diaries, a biopic, in which he played a teenage Jim Carroll as a drug-addicted high school basketball player and writer. DiCaprio next starred alongside David Thewlis in Agnieszka Holland's erotic drama Total Eclipse, a fictionalized account of the homosexual relationship between Arthur Rambeau and Paul Verlaine. He replaced River Phoenix, who died before filming began. Although the film failed commercially, it has been included in the catalogue of Warner Archive Collection, a home video division for releasing classic and cult films from Warner Brothers Library. In 1996, DiCaprio starred opposite Claire Danes in Baz Luhrmann's film Romeo plus Juliet, an abridged modernization of William Shakespeare's romantic tragedy of the same name, which retained the original Shakespearean dialogue. The project grossed $147 million worldwide and earned DiCaprio a silver bear for Best Actor at the 1997 Berlin International Film Festival. Reviewing his early works, David Thompson of The Guardian called DiCaprio a revelation in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, very moving in this boy's life, suitably desperate in the basketball diaries and a vital spark in Romeo plus Juliet. Later in 1996, DiCaprio starred in Marvin's Room, a family drama revolving around two sisters, played by Meryl Streep and Diane Keaton, who are reunited through tragedy after 17 years of estrangement. DiCaprio portrayed Hank, the troubled son of Streep's character, who has been committed to a mental asylum. Lisa Schwartzbaum of Entertainment Weekly praised the deeply gifted DiCaprio for holding his own against the experienced actresses Keaton and Streep, describing the three as full-bodied and so powerfully affecting that you're carried along on the pleasure of being in the presence of their extraordinary talent. Chapter 2 Section 2, 1997-2001, Titanic and Worldwide Recognition DiCaprio rejected a role in the film Boogie Nights to star opposite Kate Winslet in James Cameron's Titanic as members of different social classes who fall in love aboard RMS Titanic during its ill-fated maiden voyage. DiCaprio initially had doubts about it, but was eventually encouraged to pursue the part by Cameron, who strongly believed in his acting ability. With a production budget of more than $200 million, the film was the most expensive at the time and was shot at Rosarito Beach where a replica of the ship was created. Against expectations, Titanic went on to become the highest-grossing film at the time, eventually earning more than $2.1 billion in box office receipts worldwide. The role of Jack Dawson transformed DiCaprio into a superstar, resulting in intense adoration among teenage girls and young women in general that became known as Leo Mania, comparable to Beatlemania in the 1960s. The film won 11 Academy Awards, the most for any film, including Best Picture, but DiCaprio's failure to gain a nomination led to a protest against the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences by more than 200 fans. He was nominated for other high-profile awards, including a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor. DiCaprio stated in 2000, I have no connection with me during that whole Titanic phenomenon, and what my face became around the world I'll never reach that state of popularity again, and I don't expect to. It's not something I'm going to try to achieve either. 
Ibiri called his role in the film his best in 2015, writing that DiCaprio and Winslet infuse their earnest back and forth with so much genuine emotion that it's hard not to get swept up in their doomed love affair. A journalist for Vanity Fair similarly labeled them in 2008 Hollywood's most iconic screen couple since Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. Reviewing the film in 2017, Alyssa Wilkinson of Vox took note of DiCaprio's boyish charm and found him natural and unaffected in his performance. After the success of Titanic, DiCaprio reduced his workload to learn to hear own voice in choosing the roles that he wanted to pursue. DiCaprio played a self-mocking role in a brief appearance in Woody Allen's caustic satire of the fame industry, Celebrity, whom Bill Jabiri labeled the best thing in the film. That year, he also starred in the dual roles of the villainous King Louis XIV and his secret, sympathetic twin brother Philippe in Randall Wallace's The Man in the Iron Mask, based on the namesake 1939 film. The film received mixed to negative response, but grossed $180 million against its budget of $35 million. Entertainment Weekly critic Owen Gleiberman wrote that DiCaprio did not look old enough to play the part, but praised him as a fluid and instinctive actor, with the face of a mischievous angel. The Guardian's Alex von Tunzelman was similarly impressed with his performance but found his talent wasted in the film. Nevertheless, DiCaprio was awarded a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Screen Couple for both incarnations the following year. In 1998, DiCaprio was cast in American Psycho for a reported salary of $20 million, but when he failed to agree with Oliver Stone on the film's direction, DiCaprio left the project soon after, taking the lead role in The Beach instead. The latter, an adaption of Alex Garland's 1996 novel of the same name, saw him play an American backpacking tourist looking for the perfect way of life in a secret island commune in the Gulf of Thailand. Budgeted at $50 million, the film earned about three times more at the box office, but was negatively reviewed by critics, and earned him a nomination for the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actor. Todd McCarthy of Variety thought DiCaprio gave a compelling performance but his character lacked the uniqueness to make him dimensional. In the mid-1990s, DiCaprio appeared in the mostly improvised black-and-white short film Don's Plumbers a favor to aspiring director R.D. Robb. When Robb expanded it to a full-length feature, DiCaprio and co-star Tobey Maguire had its release blocked in the U.S. and Canada by court order, arguing they never intended to make it a theatrical release. The film eventually premiered at the 2001 Berlin International Film Festival, where it was well received by critics. Chapter 2 Section 3, 2002-2009, Venture into Film Production DiCaprio turned down the role of Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. His first film that year was the biopic Catch Me If You Can, based on the life of Frank Abagnale Jr., who before his 19th birthday committed check fraud to make millions in the 1960s. Directed by Steven Spielberg, the film was shot across 147 different locations in 52 days, making it the most adventurous, supercharged movie-making DiCaprio had experienced yet. The film received critical acclaim and with a worldwide gross of $351 million against a budget of $52 million, it became his second highest grossing release after Titanic. Roger Ebert praised his departure from dark and troubled characters, while two Entertainment Weekly critics in 2018 called it DiCaprio's best role, labeling him delightfully persuasive, deceptive, flirtatious, and sometimes tragic, and we dare you to find a better role, if you can. DiCaprio received his third Golden Globe nomination for his performance in the film. Also in 2002, DiCaprio starred in Martin Scorsese's Gangs of New York, a historical drama set in the mid 19th century in the Five Points district of New York City. Scorsese initially struggled selling his idea of realizing the film until DiCaprio became interested in playing protagonist Amsterdam Vallon, a young leader of an Irish American street gang and thus Miramax Films got involved with financing the project. Nonetheless, production on the film was plagued by overshooting of budgets and producer-director disagreements, 
resulting in an eight-month shoot. With a budget of $103 million, the film was the most expensive Scorsese had ever made. Gangs of New York earned $193 million worldwide and received positive critical response. DiCaprio's performance, although well received, was overshadowed by that of Daniel Day Lewis according to many critics. In 2004, DiCaprio founded the production company Appian Way Productions, a namesake of the Italian road. He was interested in finding out of the box material from an actor's perspective and developing it in a way it stayed true to its original source. He said, A lot of times, I'd gone through the process of getting a great book or finding a great story, and then too many people get their hands on it and it turns into something entirely different. It is very difficult to reverse that process. DiCaprio's first producing task was as an executive producer in The Assassination of Richard Nixon, starring Sean Penn as Samuel Bick, which was screened in the UN Certain Regard section at the 2004 Cannes Film Festival. DiCaprio and Scorsese reunited for a biopic of Howard Hughes, an American film director and aviation pioneer suffering from obsessive-compulsive disorder, in The Aviator, which DiCaprio also co-produced under Appian Way. DiCaprio initially developed the project with Michael Mann, who decided against directing it after working on biopics The Insider and Alley. DiCaprio eventually pitched John Logan's script to Scorsese, who quickly signed on to direct. The Aviator became a critical and financial success, grossing around twice its budget of $110 million. Simon Braund of Empire praised DiCaprio for convincingly playing a complex role, highlighting the scenes depicting Hugh's paranoia and obsession. He received his first Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, Motion Picture Drama nominations for an Academy Award, a BAFTA Award, and a Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Actor. In 2006, DiCaprio starred in the crime film The Departed and the political war thriller Blood Diamond. In Scorsese's The Departed, DiCaprio played the role of Billy Costigan, a state trooper working undercover in the Irish mob in Boston, someone he characterizes as in a constant, 24-hour panic attack. DiCaprio especially liked the experience of working with co-star Jack Nicholson, describing a scene with him as one of the most memorable moments of his life as an actor. In preparation, DiCaprio visited Boston to interact with people associated with the Irish mob and gained 15 pounds of muscle. Highly anticipated, the film opened to positive reviews and became one of the highest-rated wide-release films of 2006. Peter Travers of Rolling Stone praised DiCaprio's and co-star Matt Damon's performances, but felt that Nicholson overshadowed the two. Budgeted at $90 million, the film grossed $291 million and became DiCaprio and Scorsese's highest-grossing collaboration to that point. Despite DiCaprio's leading role in The Departed, the film's distributor Warner Brothers Pictures omitted his performance for a Best Supporting Actor nomination at the Ampus to avoid internal conflict with his part in Blood Diamond. Instead, his co-star Mark Wahlberg was nominated, though DiCaprio earned other accolades for The Departed, including a Satellite Award for Best Supporting Actor and nominations for Best Actor at the Golden Globes and BAFTA Awards. In Blood Diamond, DiCaprio starred as a diamond smuggler from Rhodesia who is involved in the Sierra Leone Civil War. While filming, he worked with 24 orphaned children from the SOS Children's Village in Maputo, Mozambique, and said he was touched by his interactions with them. To prepare, he spent six months in Africa, learned about camouflage from people in South African military, and interviewed and recorded people in the country to improve his accent. The film received generally favorable reviews, and DiCaprio was praised for the authenticity of his South African accent, which is generally known as difficult to imitate. Claudia Puig of the USA Today approvingly highlighted DiCaprio's transition from a boy to a man on screen, and Anne Hornaday of the Washington Post similarly noted his growth as an actor since The Departed. DiCaprio received nominations for an Academy Award and a Golden Globe for Blood Diamond. In 2007, DiCaprio produced the comedy drama Gardener of Eden, 
which according to the Hollywood reporters Frank Sheck lack the necessary dramatic urgency or black humor to connect with audiences. Later that year, he produced, co-wrote and narrated The Eleventh Hour, a documentary on the state of the natural environment that won the Earthwatch Environmental Film Award through the National Geographic Channel in March 2008. DiCaprio was also a creator and an executive producer for Planet Green's Greensburg, which ran for three seasons. Set in Greensburg, Kansas, it is about rebuilding the town in a sustainable way after being hit by the May 2007 EF5 tornado. Also in 2008, DiCaprio starred in Body of Lies, a spy film based on the novel of the same name. He played one of three agents battling a terrorist organization in the Middle East. DiCaprio dyed his hair brown and wore brown contacts for his role in the film, which he considered a throwback to political films of the 1970s like The Parallax View and Three Days of the Condor. The film received mixed reviews from critics, and grossed $115 million against a budget of $67.50 million. Later in 2008, DiCaprio collaborated with Kate Winslet for the drama Revolutionary Road, directed by her then-husband Sam Mendes. As both actors had been reluctant to make romantic films similar to Titanic, it was Winslet who suggested that they both work with her on a film adaptation of the 1961 eponymous novel by Richard Yates. As she had read the script by Justin Heither, she found that the plot had little in common with the 1997 blockbuster. Once DiCaprio agreed to the film, it went almost immediately into production. Playing a couple in a failing marriage in the 1950s, DiCaprio and Winslet spent some time together in preparation, and DiCaprio felt claustrophobic on the small set they used. He saw his character as unheroic, slightly cowardly and someone willing to be just a product of his environment. Peter Travers was impressed with DiCaprio's pairing with Winslet, and with his multi-layered portrayal of an overwhelmed character, while Marshall Seller of GQ called it that the most mature and memorable performance of his lifetime. DiCaprio earned his seventh Golden Globes nomination for the film. Revolutionary Road grossed $76 million against its budget of $35 million. He ended the 2000s by producing director Jaume Coletzera's psychological horror thriller film Orphan, starring Vera Farmiga, Peter Sarsgaard, and Isabel Furman. Although the film received mixed reviews, it was a commercial success. Chapter 2 Section 4, 2010-2013, Films with High-Profile Directors DiCaprio continued to collaborate with Scorsese in the 2010 psychological thriller film Shutter Island, based on the 2003 novel of the same name by Dennis Lehane. He played Edward Teddy Daniels, a U.S. Marshal investigating a psychiatric facility located on an island, who comes to question his own sanity. DiCaprio and Scorsese quickly became interested in the project in 2007, and the former co-produced the film under Appian Way with Phoenix Pictures. Because of the film's disturbing scenes, DiCaprio had nightmares of mass murder during production and considered relaxing with his friend's therapy. The film was released to mixed reviews, Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian praised Scorsese's direction and the acting but criticized its twist ending. Peter Travers called it DiCaprio's most haunting and emotionally complex performance yet, and particularly liked his cave scene with co-star Patricia Clarkson. The film was a commercial success, grossing $294 million worldwide against a budget of $80 million. DiCaprio's second role in 2010 was in Christopher Nolan's critically acclaimed ensemble science fiction film Inception. Inspired by the experience of lucid dreaming and dream incubation, the film features Dom Cobb, an extractor who enters the dreams of others to obtain information that is otherwise inaccessible. Cobb is promised a chance to regain his old life in exchange for planting an idea in a corporate target's mind. DiCaprio was intrigued by this concept, this dream heist notion and how this character's gonna unlock his dream world and ultimately affect his real life. Made on a budget of $160 million, the film grossed $825 million worldwide to become DiCaprio's second-highest grossing film. 
To star in this film, DiCaprio agreed to a pay cut from his $20 million fee, in favor of splitting first dollar gross points, meaning he received a percentage of cinema ticket sales. The risk paid off, as DiCaprio earned $50 million from the film, becoming his highest payday yet. After playing demanding roles in Shutter Island and Inception, DiCaprio took a small break from acting to have some time for himself, returning the following November in Clint Eastwood's J. Edgar. A biopic about J. Edgar Hoover, the film focuses on the career of the FBI director from the Palmer Raids onward, including an examination of his private life as an alleged closeted homosexual. Critics felt that the, the film lacked coherence overall but commended DiCaprio's performance. Roger Ebert praised DiCaprio's fully realized, subtle and persuasive performance, hinting at more than Hoover ever revealed, perhaps even to himself. Also in 2011, he produced Catherine Hardwick's romantic horror film Red Riding Hood, very loosely based on the folk tale Little Red Riding Hood. Though the film was criticized for its cliched script, Mary Poles of Time magazine named it one of the ten worst films of 2011, it had moderate box office returns. He was also an executive producer for George Clooney's political drama The Ides of March, an adaptation of Bo Willimon's 2008 play Farragut North. In 2012, DiCaprio starred as plantation owner Calvin Candy in Quentin Tarantino's spaghetti western, Django Unchained. After reading the script, DiCaprio was uncomfortable with the extent of racism portrayed in the film, but his co-stars and Tarantino convinced him not to sugarcoat it. While filming, DiCaprio accidentally cut his hand on glass, but continued filming, and Tarantino elected to use the take in the final product. The film received critical acclaim, a writer for Wired magazine commended him for playing a villainous role and his blood-chilling performance. The film, earned DiCaprio a Golden Globe Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Django Unchained grossed $424 million worldwide on a production budget of $100 million. In January 2013, DiCaprio said he would take a long break from acting to fly around the world doing good for the environment. That year, he had four releases as an actor and a producer. His first was in the role of millionaire Jay Gatsby in Baz Luhrmann's The Great Gatsby, an adaptation of F. Scott Fitzgerald's 1925 novel of the same name, co-starring Carey Mulligan, and Tobey Maguire. DiCaprio liked the idea of playing a man who realizes his imaginations, someone he characterizes as a hopeless romantic, a completely obsessed wacko or a dangerous gangster, clinging to wealth. The film received mixed reviews from critics, but DiCaprio's performance was praised, and earned him an actor award for best actor in a leading role. Critic Rafer Guzman of Newsday wrote that DiCaprio was not only tough but also vulnerable, touching, funny, a faker, a human. It's a tremendous, hard-won performance. Matt Zoller cites of Roger Ebert's website described his performance as the movie's greatest and simplest special effect, and iconic, maybe his career best. The film grossed $348 million worldwide. Three films were produced by DiCaprio under Appian Way in 2013, the ensemble crime thriller Runner Runner, which The Guardian's Shan Brooks described as a lazy, trashy film that barely goes through the motions, the critically and commercially failed thriller Out of the Furnace, and the black comedy drama The Wolf of Wall Street. DiCaprio reunited with Scorsese for the fifth time in The Wolf of the Wall Street, a film based on the life of stockbroker Jordan Belfort, who was arrested in the late 1990s for securities fraud and money laundering. DiCaprio wanted to play Belfort ever since he had read his autobiography and won a bidding war with Warner Brothers against Brad Pitt and Paramount Pictures for the rights to Belfort's memoir in 2007. He was fond of Belfort's honest and unapologetic portrayal of his actual experiences in the book, and was inspired by the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008 to make the film. The Wolf of Wall Street received highly positive reviews for Scorsese's direction and DiCaprio's comedic performance. The Hollywood Reporter's Todd McCarthy lauded DiCaprio for fully realizing his character's potential with a carefree performance. 
The film earned him the Golden Globe Award for Best Actor in a Musical or Comedy and nominations for a BAFTA Award for Best Actor in a Leading Role, as well as Academy Awards for Best Actor and Best Picture. Chapter 2 Section 5, 2014 Present, Focus on Environmental Documentaries and Awards Success DiCaprio, was an executive producer on Varunga, a 2014 British documentary film about four people fighting to protect the world's last mountain gorillas from war and poaching. The film premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival in April 2014, and DiCaprio, was nominated for the 2015 Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Documentary or Nonfiction Special. Cowspiracy, The Sustainability Secret was another documentary film that year for which he was an executive producer, he took part in the new cut released exclusively on Netflix that September. It explores the impact of animal agriculture on the environment, and investigates the policies of environmental organizations on this issue. In 2015, DiCaprio produced and played for Trapper Hugh Glass in Alejandro G. Inaritu's survival drama The Revenant. DiCaprio has described it as his most difficult film, he had to eat a raw slab of bison's liver and sleep in animal carcasses, and suffered hypothermia. He also learned to shoot a musket, build a fire, speak two Native American languages and apply ancient healing techniques. Built on a budget of $135 million, the film earned $533 million worldwide. The film received positive reviews with particular praise for DiCaprio's acting. Mark Kermode of The Guardian wrote that DiCaprio shone with a performance that prioritizes physicality over speech, and Nick Tessemlian of Empire noted that he uplifted the film. The film earned him numerous awards, including an Academy Award, a Golden Globe, a BAFTA, a Screen Actors Guild Award and a Critics' Choice Award for Best Actor. For the next three years, DiCaprio narrated documentaries and served as a producer for films. In 2016, he was an executive producer for The Ivory Game and Catching the Sun, and produced, hosted, and narrated the documentary Before the Flood about climate change. He produced the crime drama Live by Night, which received largely unenthusiastic reviews and failed to recoup its $65 million production budget. His production ventures in 2018 were also box office failures, the psychological horror Delirium and the action-adventure Robin Hood, a retelling of the namesake legend. After narrating the 2019 global warming documentary Ice on Fire, DiCaprio returned to acting following a four-year break in Quentin Tarantino's comedy-drama Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which traces the relationship between Rick Dalton, an aging television actor and his stuntman, Cliff Booth. To help the film's financing, DiCaprio and Pitt agreed to take a pay cut, and they each received $10 million. DiCaprio liked working with Pitt, Tarantino described the pair as the most exciting since Robert Redford and Paul Newman. DiCaprio was fascinated with the film's homage to Hollywood and focus on the friendship between his and Pitt's characters. He drew from real-life experience of witnessing the struggles and rejections of his actor friends in the industry. Reviews for the film and DiCaprio were positive, a critic for Business Insider called it one of the best performances of his career, and Ian Sandwell of Digital Spy particularly liked the duo's chemistry, which he said helps bring authenticity to their character's connection. He received nominations for an Oscar, a Golden Globe, a BAFTA Award and a Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Actor. The film earned $374 million against a budget of $90 million. In 2020, DiCaprio served as an executive producer for The Right Stuff, a television series adaption of the 1973 namesake book. After being in development at National Geographic for three years, it was released on Disney Plus in October. That May, DiCaprio briefly featured in the finale of the miniseries The Last Dance. In 2021, DiCaprio appeared in Adam McKay's satirical comedy Don't Look Up. Principal photography was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic and DiCaprio unofficially worked with McKay on the script. Starring alongside Jennifer Lawrence as two astronomers attempting to warn humanity about an extinction-level comet, DiCaprio saw this film as an analogy of the world's indifference to the climate crisis. 
As a frequent supporter of environmentalism, DiCaprio said he has often looked to star in and make films tackling issues related to it, something he found hard due to people's inability to listen. He praised Mackay for envisioning a project on how humans would react to a serious issue from a political, social and scientific standpoint. While reviews for the film were mixed, critics were unanimous in their praise for DiCaprio's and Lawrence's performances, journalists from Digital Spy and NDTV lauded their energetic, and delightful pairing. DiCaprio earned nominations for a Golden Globe and a BAFTA Award for the film. It broke the record for the most views in a single week in Netflix history. Chapter 2 Section 5 Subsection 2 Upcoming Projects In August, 2015, it was announced that Martin Scorsese will direct an adaptation of Eric Larson's The Devil in the White City starring DiCaprio. Paramount announced in 2017 that it acquired the movie rights for an English-language adaptation of The Black Hand, which will star DiCaprio as turn-of-the-20th-century police officer Joe Petrosino. Later that year, Paramount won a bidding war against Universal Pictures for the rights to adapt Walter Isaacson's biography of Leonardo da Vinci. The studio bought the rights under its deal with DiCaprio's Appian Way, which planned to produce the film with DiCaprio as the star. As of 2018, DiCaprio was set to produce and star in Scorsese's Roosevelt, a biopic of former U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, and was cast in Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon based on the book of the same name by David Gran. Chapter 3, Reception and Acting Style Early in his career, DiCaprio gained a reputation for his reckless behavior and intense partying with a group of male celebrities he liked, to call the Pussy Posse in the 1990s. During an unknown activity, he got himself and friend Justin Herwick almost killed when his parachute failed to open, after which his instructor released an emergency call. In response, DiCaprio said he is fond of doing things that scare him. In an infamous article published by New York Magazine in 1998, journalist Nancy Jo Sales criticized DiCaprio as someone whose pursuit was to chase girls, pick fights and not tip the waitress. John McCain, who was a United States Senator for Arizona, called him an androgynous wimp. DiCaprio found people's perception of him exaggerated, adding, they want you miserable, just like them. They don't want heroes, what they want is to see you fall. Following the early media scrutiny, the New York Times' Karen James credited DiCaprio for being one of the few actors to use his stardom to further social causes but he rarely lets the public beyond the glittering veil of the photo op. Carol Cadwallader of The Guardian said DiCaprio is polite, charming, makes jokes, engages eye contact, and manages to give almost no hint whatsoever of his actual personality. DiCaprio is regarded as one of the finest actors of his generation. As he achieved international stardom after Titanic, it intensified his image as a teen idol and romantic lead, from both of which he sought to dissociate himself. He has since said he feels nervous starring in big-budget studio films due to their hype and marketing campaigns. As an actor, he likes to look at film as a relevant art form, like a painting or sculpture. A hundred years from now, people will still be watching that movie. He is drawn to roles based on real-life people, and stories told in specific periods. According to Karen James, DiCaprio is unafraid of working with established directors on unconventional projects, a risk that has led to failed films like The Beach, but also to his several successful collaborations with Martin Scorsese. DiCaprio has described his relationship with the director as dreamlike, and admires his knowledge of film, crediting him for teaching him its history and importance. Scorsese, on his part, has commented on DiCaprio's ability to repeatedly demonstrate emotion on screen. Jesse Hassinger of the AV Club considers their works together, which earned them the 2013 National Board of Review to be career-defining moments for them, and as vital as Scorsese's acclaimed collaborations with Robert De Niro. Agnieszka Holland, who directed DiCaprio in Total Eclipse, describes him as one of the most mature actors I've ever worked with, and admires his courageous choice of roles. 
she remarked that he does not apply method acting, but is doing some trick look at him on screen and, for the moment of the shot, he really becomes the character. Film critic Philip French, writing for The Observer, has identified a theme of characters in the process of becoming a man. He wrote that DiCaprio's inclination toward films about dysfunctional families and characters seeking a father figure allude to his own troubled childhood. DiCaprio often plays characters who themselves are playing roles, which Karen James says looks simple on screen but is a rather sophisticated acting. He tends to play anti-heroes and characters who lose their mental stability as the narrative progresses. DiCaprio is particularly known for his ability to heavily commit to each role he plays, Colin Cover of the Seattle Times noted how this quality sets him apart from most of his contemporaries and redefines film stardom. Several media publications, such as People, Empire, and Harper's Bazaar, have included DiCaprio in their listings of the most attractive actors. In 1998, he sued Playgirl magazine over plans to publish a fully nude picture of him. He has said he does not believe in focusing on appearance, as this is only temporary and can negatively affect one's profession in the industry, and looks for career longevity instead. In 2005, DiCaprio was made a commander of the Ordre des Arts et des Lettres by the French Minister of Culture for his contributions to the arts. In 2016, he was named one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time magazine. He was included on Forbes' annual list of the world's highest paid actors in 2008 and from 2010 to 2016 with respective earnings of $45 million, $28 million, $77 million, $37 million, $39 million, $29 million and $27 million, topping the list in 2011. The magazine has commended DiCaprio's ability to star in Risky, are rated films that become box office successes. The Hollywood Reporter listed him as one of the 100 most powerful people in entertainment from 2016 to 2019. A writer for the same magazine credits DiCaprio for being the rare actor to have a successful career without ever having made a comic book movie, family film or pre-branded franchise. Leo is the franchise? Stacy Wilson Hunt, analyzing his career in New York Magazine in 2016, noted DiCaprio, unlike most of his contemporaries, had not starred in a failed film in the previous ten years. Of his success, DiCaprio says, my attitude is the same as when I started. I feel very connected to that 15-year-old kid who got his first movie. DiCaprio has cited James Dean as one of his favorite and most influential actors. When asked about which performances stayed with him the most in an interview, DiCaprio responded, I remember being incredibly moved by Jimmy Dean, in East of Eden. There was something so raw and powerful about that performance. His vulnerability his confusion about his entire history, his identity, his desperation to be loved. That performance just broke my heart. Chapter 4, Other Ventures Chapter 4 Section 1, Environmental Activism DiCaprio is identified as one of the most active celebrities in the climate change movement. He was eager to learn about ecology from an early age, watching documentaries on rainforest, depletion and the loss of species and habitats. He has said that the environment is more important to him than spirituality, and that he is agnostic. He established the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation in 1998, a non-profit organization devoted to promoting environmental awareness. Although concerned with all areas of the environment, it focuses on global warming, preserving Earth's biodiversity and supporting renewable energy. It has worked on projects in over 40 countries and has produced two short web documentaries, Water Planet and Global Warning. The foundation has also funded debt for nature swaps. DiCaprio has received praise from environmental groups and accolades, including the Martin Litton Environment Award in 2001 from Environment Now and the Environmental Leadership Award in 2003 from Global Green USA. He has been an active supporter of numerous environmental organizations and sat on the board of the World Wildlife Fund, Global Green USA, 
and International Fund for Animal Welfare. DiCaprio has owned environment-friendly electric hybrid vehicles and his home is powered by solar panels. However, his use of private jets and large yachts has prompted accusations of hypocrisy due to their large carbon footprints. DiCaprio states that global warming is the world's number one environmental challenge. He chaired the National Earth Day celebration in 2000, where he interviewed Bill Clinton and they discussed plans to deal with global warming and the environment. DiCaprio presented at the 2007 American Leg of Live, Earth, and in 2010 earned a nomination for the VH1 Do Something Award for his environmental work. In November 2010, DiCaprio donated $1 million to the Wildlife Conservation Society at Russia's Tiger Summit. DiCaprio's persistence in reaching the event after encountering two plane delays caused then Prime Minister Vladimir Putin to describe him as a music or real man. In 2011, DiCaprio joined the Animal Legal Defense Fund's campaign to free Tony, a tiger who had spent the last decade at the tiger truck stop in Gros Tete, Louisiana. Two years later, he organized a benefit 11th hour fine art auction, which raised nearly $40 million for his foundation. He told the attendees, bid as if the fate of the planet depended on us. It became the world's highest grossing environmental charity event ever held. In 2014, he was appointed as a United Nations representative on climate change, and made an opening statement to members of the UN Climate Summit. In 2015, he announced his intention to divest from fossil fuels. He again spoke at the UN in April 2016 prior to the signing of the Paris Climate Change Agreement. At a 2016 meeting with Pope Francis, DiCaprio gave a charity donation and spoke about environmental issues with him. A few days later, possibly influenced by this meeting, the Pope said he would act in a charity film. DiCaprio traveled to Indonesia in early 2016 where he criticized the government's palm oil industry's slash and burn forest clearing methods. In July 2016, his foundation awarded $15.6 million to help protect wildlife and the rights of Native Americans, along with combating climate change. That October, DiCaprio joined Mark Ruffalo in North Dakota in support of the Standing Rock tribe's opposition to the Dakota Access Pipeline. In April 2017, he protested against President Trump's inaction on climate change by attending the People's Climate March. In July, a charity auction and celebrity concert put on by DiCaprio's foundation had raised over $30 million in its opening days. The DiCaprio Foundation donated $100 million in December 2018 to fight climate change. In May 2021, DiCaprio announced a $43 million pledge to enact conservation operations across the Galapagos Islands, with the announcement marked by his social media accounts being taken over by a wildlife veterinarian and island restoration specialist, Paula Castaño. Chapter 4 Section 2 Political Activism during the 2004 presidential election, DiCaprio campaigned and donated to John Kerry's presidential bid. He gave $2,300 to Barack Obama's presidential campaign in the 2008 election, the maximum contribution an individual could give in that election cycle, and $5,000 to Obama's 2012 campaign. DiCaprio endorsed Hillary Clinton for the 2016 presidential election. In March 2020, DiCaprio attended a fundraiser for Joe Biden at the home of Paramount Pictures executive Sherry Lansing. Prior to the 2020 election, DiCaprio narrated a Netflix documentary series about voting rights, stating, All of us may have been created equal. But we'll never actually be equal until we all vote. So don't wait. On social media, DiCaprio urged voters to make a plan to cast their ballots and to draw attention to voter suppression and restrictive voter ID laws, citing vote riders as a source of information and assistance. Chapter 4 Section 3 – Philanthropy In 1998, DiCaprio and his mother donated $35,000 for a Leonardo DiCaprio computer center at the library in Los Feliz, the site of his childhood home. 
It was rebuilt after the 1994 Northridge earthquake and opened in early 1999. In 2010, he donated $1 million to relief efforts in Haiti after the earthquake. DiCaprio donated $61,000 to the gay rights group GLAD in 2013. Three years later, DiCaprio took part in an annual fundraising gala event of Children of Armenia Fund, as a special guest of his close friend and gala's honorary chair Tony Shafrazi. DiCaprio contributed $65,000 to the cause. After Hurricane Harvey in 2017, DiCaprio provided $1 million to the United Way Harvey Recovery Fund through his foundation. In 2020, DiCaprio's foundation donated $3 million to Australia bushfire relief efforts. In May 2009, DiCaprio joined Kate Winslet, his co star from Titanic and Revolutionary Road, director James Cameron, and Canadian singer Celine Dion, in a campaign to raise money to financially support the fees of the nursing home where Milvina Dean, the last living survivor of the RMS Titanic, was residing. DiCaprio personally donated $20,000 to support Dean. Chapter 5, Personal Life DiCaprio's personal life is the subject of widespread media attention. He rarely grants interviews and is reticent about his private life, but he has been the subject of several articles detailing his involvement with women aged 25 or younger. In 1999, DiCaprio met Brazilian model Giselle Bunchen, whom he dated until 2005. He was romantically involved with Israeli model Bar Raffaele from 2005 to 2011, during which time he met with Israeli President Shimon Peres and visited Raffaele's hometown of Hot Hasharon. He later dated German fashion model Tony Goran from July 2013 until December 2014, and later in 2017. DiCaprio has been in a relationship with Argentine-American model and actress Camila Marone since 2017. DiCaprio owns a home in Los Angeles and an apartment in Battery Park City. In 2009, he bought an island, Blackador Cay, off mainland Belize, on which he is set to open an environment-friendly resort, and in 2014, he purchased the original Dinosaur residence designed by mid-century modern architect Donald Wexler in Palm Springs, California. In 2005, DiCaprio's face was severely injured when model Aretha Wilson hit him over the head with a broken bottle at a Hollywood party. As a result, he required 17 stitches to his face and neck. Wilson pled guilty to the attack and was sentenced in 2010 to two years in prison. In 2017, when the Wolf of Wall Street producer Red Granite Pictures was involved in the one Malaysia development Bahad scandal, DiCaprio turned over the gifts he received from business associates at the production company to the U.S. government. These included the Best Actor Oscar trophy that Marlon Brando won for his role in 1954's On the Waterfront, a $3.2 million Pablo Picasso painting, and a $9 million Jean-Michel Basquiat collage. Chapter 6 Filmography and Accolades According to the online portal Box Office Mojo and the review aggregate site Rotten Tomatoes, DiCaprio's most critically and commercially successful films include What's Eating Gilbert Grape, Romeo Plus Juliet, Titanic, Catch Me If You Can, Gangs of New York, The Aviator, The Departed, Blood Diamond, Shutter Island, Inception, Django Unchained, The Great Gatsby, The Wolf of Wall Street, The Revenant and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. His films have grossed $7.2 billion worldwide. DiCaprio has been recognized by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for the following performances. 66th Academy Awards, Best Supporting Actor, nomination, as Arnold Arnie Grape in What's Eating Gilbert Grape. 77th Academy Awards, Best Actor, nomination, as Howard Hughes in The Aviator. 79th Academy Awards, Best Actor, nomination, as Danny Archer in Blood Diamond. 86th Academy Awards, Best Picture and Best Actor, nominations, as Jordan Belfort in The Wolf of Wall Street. 88th Academy Awards, Best Actor, win, for his role as Hugh Glass in The Revenant. 
92nd Academy Awards, Best Actor, nomination, as Rick Dalton in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood DiCaprio has won three Golden Globe Awards, Best Actor, Motion Picture Drama for The Aviator and The Revenant and Best Actor, Motion Picture Musical or Comedy for The Wolf of Wall Street, as well as a BAFTA Award and a Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Actor for The Revenant. Chapter 6, Section 1, Sources.